Hey, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This reflex image, if this is your first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon. If you have any questions, you can contact me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to duplicate yourself into two or more places. Yeah, that's me in the picture frame. And I'll be showing you how I do that so that you can also do that too for your pictures. So with no further ado, let's jump into action. So here's what my first picture looks like and this is going to hold the background I'll be using for the rest of the picture. So this is going to be the major background. But as you're seeing it right now, it's not that wide enough. So what I want to use it for, you know, it has, it has to be this wide and uh, also it has to gain more height because of the people I'll be bringing in. So we'll be doing our background expansion for the first thing there right now so what to do that now let me go back to the picture i'll be working on then i'll click on my click on my crop tool i'll make sure it's on 4x5 but the 4x5 four, four it's on right now it's on portrait so we have to turn it to landscape by switching the arrows here clicking on it it's going to switch to landscape then i'm going to increase the border rooms of every picture so i'm going to increase the size until i see if it it is okay so i think around this way is okay for me I think this is okay for me now i just have to click on my okay after that the next thing i'll be doing i'm going to fill this area up with the initial backdrop so i'm going to use my rectangle marker tool which you know that's what you always use i'm going to scroll over this area sorry rectangle marker tool i already clipped the clicker marker tool so i'm using the rectangle click on it i'm going to scroll around this way but as you can see it's already touching my model so i'm going to use my navigational key to move it away from my from myself <laughs> model yeah i'm the model for the picture so i'm going to click on my ctrl c for free transform i'll hold down my shift key then i'm going to drag drag right so let me zoom out so i'll be able to do it very well ctrl minus to zoom out so i'll hold down my shift key then i'm going to drag until i'm no longer seeing the rough uh the yellowish background again i click on my ok ctrl d to the select i'll do the same thing to the left hand side also Ctrl T for pre transform, hold down my shift key, then I'll drag. So you can see, click on OK, Ctrl D to deselect. Sorry, I still have some yellow lines here. Ctrl Z to go back, Ctrl T, then zoom out, drag again, Ctrl D to deselect. Ctrl D to deselect. So I'll do the same thing to the top side also. I'll zoom in, I'll make sure it's not touching uh, the cap I'm wearing. So Ctrl T also for pre transform. So the normal way is to expand our background, that's the same techniques we are using here again. Click on my OK, Ctrl D to deselect, I'll do the same thing to this down part also. Ctrl C for free transform, hold down the shift key, then I'll going to drag down. Then Ctrl D to deselect. So boom, automatically I've actually expanded my background. So we can create the background from scratch again, but I still love to use this, my studio background as my major source of background. The next thing we'll be doing right now is for me to remove my model from this background right now i don't need to clean the background because the background is already smooth enough so i don't need to work on the background at all all i just need to do is to bring in all the backdrops to bring in all that picture which i'll be using the picture of myself which i'll be using one at the left one at the right, right hand side so stay, stay tuned see you guys in the next one minute so in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file from my overlays down to my color lookup which is my lot file so you just have to scroll down to your video so under the comment this is my description so it's not going to load the description for you you just have to click on show more click on it so it's going to show all the options once it does that just click on my store link so here's my store link once you click on it it's going to take you directly to my store so you can actually select any file you want from the color lookup this is a light skin lot this is a feather which i use in my recent video this is 100 premium baby overlays this is my fourth video course this video course entails on how to download all the files i want the site i use in downloading all my files free of charge including my photoshop panels also this includes my png files this includes all my packs all my picture editing files my premium overlay my png my flying fabrics my color lookup my presets so once you buy this you've already bought everything apart from this one so here is my flying fabrics here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on here's my color lookup here is my background overlay 
and here is my preset file so in case you're interested in buying anyone you can actually go for them the good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency any currency of your choice you can buy with any currency of your choice welcome back guys so the first thing we're doing after we expanded our background is to duplicate our model layer by clicking on ctrl j then we are going to use our polygonal our quick selections and our polygonal exit tool to remove our model from the background to remove our subject from the background to remove me from the background <laughs> so i'm going to click on my quick selection tool then i'm going to click on select subject so i wait for it to load up to make the selections for me so let's take keep waiting for it it's going to undo the selection for us itself the selection might not be all that perfect but it's going to give us a head start as you can see right now it already did the selection for us but it's not all that perfect so let's make the amendment ourselves i'll be using my polygonal axis to do that so i'm going to be adding to the selection i'm subtracting for the selection at the same time so click on my polygonal axis right now go back to addition first click on it i'll click on it click on it as you can see so this time around still an addition again so i'll still keep clicking on it this way just to make sure i get the perfect selection so i'm going to pull this step a little bit see you guys in the next 30 seconds or one minute so right now we're done with the post selection so what i just need to do is just to max it i click on my max as you can see right now so i have my first subjects without the max without the background so i'm going to be bringing in another file which i'll be using so that will be coming from this other direction the last person will be coming from this direction still the same me but different posture so i'll go back to my file manager where the picture is located go to my file manager so i think i should be going with this this is the one i used earlier on i think okay 99 i think this is the one i used so i'll just have to drag it to photoshop but this time around i'm not opening it on this document i'm trying to open it on another document on a new document entirely so i'm going to click on it i wait for it to load up wait for it to load up then now i'm going to open it in photoshop So keep waiting for it to load up in our Photoshop for us. After that, what I just need to do is just to click Ctrl J first. Then I'm going to click on my quick selection to click on select subject and wait for the computer to do the selection for us. So it actually did the perfect job for us, but we still have to make few still have to make few amendments there. I have to make few amendments there so we'll go back to pick up polygonal like axis to make sure it's on subtraction so i'm going to circle around it this way keep selecting as you can see keep selecting So I'm going to fast forward this step, meet you guys in the next 30 seconds. So this time around, instead of me to delete the model from the background, I'll still be using the initial technique I always use, which is to max it. I'm going to max my subjects, as you can see. It, it came with its own uh, max, so I've already deleted, deleted the background there. So all I need to do is just to drag it to the document I'm working on right now. Drag it here, as you can see. Control T for free transform. I'm going to resize it. I'm going to paste it where I want it to be. I think I want it to be around this way. So the placement automat also matters a lot. So it's going to let you know where exactly it's supposed to be standing, how the height is supposed to be. The eye differential is supposed to be so take your time in doing this which i'll be doing right now I'm trying to amend it to make sure it's going to fit in perfectly for the system posture so that it won't look obvious that you actually brought it in while manipulating so once i'm done with this right now i have actually need to bring the shadow shadow back shadow in the foot and that's the major reason why i did uh 
that's the major reason why I brought in with the max so I'm just going to click ctrl J on it this time around again so the below one right now I'm going to click on the max then I'll pick my brush make sure it's 100% black this is not necessary to do so I'm going to bring back the shadow the footer shadow so make sure it's on color white sorry then I'm going to scroll over it as you can see it's going to bring the initial shadow it it has on the other background it's going to bring it back for us so that being said they are going to do the same thing for the third, third document also again I'm going to do the same thing for the third document also so I'll just go back to my file manager go to where my file manager is located now look at the last picture which I'll be using I think this is the exact one I used so we just have to drag it down to my Photoshop So wait for it to load, open it in Photoshop, then I'll repeat the same step I did on the last one, on the last picture I brought in. So this time around I'm going to be fast forwarding this process, catch you guys in the next 30 seconds. So welcome back guys so as you can see right now i've actually done just that so what i just need to do is to click on ctrl c then expand it to place it where i want it to be the actual size i want it to be i'm going to readjust it just to make sure it's fitting in the way i want it to so i'm going to readjust the size a little bit just to make sure it look more realistic so once i'm done with the adjustment i just have to place it so the same thing I do for the previous one, that's the same thing I'll be doing for this one also. I'm going to click on Ctrl J. Ctrl J. Then the layer below, which is this, I'm going to click on the max. Then I'll pick my brush and make sure the color is on white. Then I'm going to scroll over this footer aspect to return my shadow back. As you can see, shadow is the initial thing we need while manipulating pictures. So we have to make sure we protect our shadow at all costs. So that's what that's what I just did right now. I actually brought the footer shadow back, as you can see right now. So that being said, now my mission look nice, but the issue we are having right now is the border room at the top is not enough to the border room at the at the down. So I want to go back to our crop two, go back to our crop two. I'm going to adjust this from the down hand side, down area. Then we're going to increase it up. I think it's okay around this way. So wait for it to load. We'll go back to our background. Then I'm going to click on my rectangle marker to. Then I'm going to scroll by this way. Make sure it's not touching any of my subjects. Then Ctrl T for free transform. I hold down my shift key, then I'll drag up. So click on my OK, Ctrl D to deselect. So as you can see right now, I've actually dropped. I've actually created what you want to do. So now you can now start with your color grading. But I want to add a little bit of going light at the middle of the background. So that it's going to seem as if there's a concentrated light there. So don't forget we are still on our background layer. I just have to click on my A clicker marker to hold down my shift key. And I'm going to circle around it this way. So after that, I'll go to my adjustment layer, click on curve. I'm going to increase my curves. I'll bring it up, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up a little bit. Then I'm going to click on the max. Then I'm going to increase the feather. I think about 400 is okay, 500 is okay for me. As you can see right now, you need to see myself there's a glowing light at the middle of our picture. So this time around, I want to change my background from normal background to change to a texture background. So how am I going to do that right now? So I just have to go to my file manager, I'll go to where my files are located and go and pick my texture background which I usually use which is this, my Canva backdrop. So I'll take it to Photoshop, I'll paste it, wait for it to load up, I'm going to increase the size. But as you can see the issue I'm having right now, the shadow I just brought in right now, they are still reflecting there. So I'm going to click on OK first. Then I look for where the shadows are located. Then I'm going to drag it, drag it below uh, the Canva I just brought in right now. So let's wait for our picture to paste, so that we can make adjustments what we want to do. So we actually brought the overlay in. So this time around, I'm going to keep switching off each of the layers to know which of them are the shadows I have over here. So let me start with this. As you can see, it's a shadow. So I'm going to bring it down below it. So I'll check with the other one also. 
okay i think i've actually seen this other shadow so i'm also going to drag it down so i cannot easily turn my uh canva now i'll turn it from normal to soft light so click on the normal i'll bring it down to soft light as you can see click on my okay but the issue is that it actually came in, came in with its own color which i don't like so i'm going to click on ctrl u click on ctrl u then i'm going to bring down all the saturation i'll click on my okay then we're good to go so the next thing right now i cannot start my color grading but the last one i did i actually brought in a png file which is more of a a wooden uh ladder so let me go and bring that in right now so that i can just call it a day so i'll just go to my back to my file manager then i'll go to where my png files are located go to where my png files are located so i'll look where the ladder is look for it i have different ones here but i actually need the brown ones i'll go with the background i don't want to use the white for this so let me see if i can still know its actual location okay 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 i think i've seen it somewhere aha uh -huh, just it and as you can see it came with its own shadow so i just have to drag it down to my photoshop then i'm going to expand it to the size i want i will adjust the standing let me adjust it a little bit as you can see i think it's okay around this way i'll click on my okay but there's still one issue while i'm breaking in the png it actually is too bright for my liking so i'm going to reduce the brightness by clicking on ctrl m and i'm going to bring it down bring it down bring it down click on my okay it's still not okay for me i'll say ctrl m it once more i'll still drag it down a little again then i'll click on okay as you can see right now it's actually blended in with the color perfectly so now we can start our color grading you can start by adding a vintage a little vintage to the head to the edge of the picture but i'm doing that right now I'll just go straight and pick up my color grading lots i'll just apply it on it and i'll call it a day we'll go to my adjustment layer i'll click on my gradient map let's see if we can use the gradient map to color grade this then i'm going to open the colors there this is the one that goes perfectly with my skin tone i'll click on it then i'll change the blend mode from normal i'll change that to soft light and boom automatically look at what we have so if the saturation is too much go to the opacity reduce it now you call it a day look at what you just actually created right now and it look more realistic very very real and you actually achieve the goal you want to achieve so i hope this video helps in one way or the other so that's about this video guys thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and also turn on the notification icon if you have any question you can contact me and i'll get back to you as soon as possible see you guys on my next tutorial